oh my god i need your help i need packages of bees i need treatments i need sugar water i need sugar water feeders I, my schedule is so booked full i'm going to be dealing with bees 24 7 for the next nine months and i don't have time to talk to you any longer so without further ado let's get right to it Good afternoon, beekeepers and enthusiasts. How are you doing? It's another great day at the farm, and we're hanging out. It is really windy outside, so we're coming into the coffee shop to talk to you this afternoon, and we've got a great topic for you, and of course today we'll be talking about taking the unnecessary steps out of beekeeping. So we all know, you know, if someone's getting into beekeeping, there's all the big resources out there, the big books, you know, all the big YouTubers. You know, when they tell you to get into beekeeping, they've got a thousand steps for how you should be keeping bees. And what we're going to talk to you about today is how most of that stuff is not necessary at all. And you can keep bees very successfully in a low maintenance style. It's a lot less work for you. It's a lot cheaper for you as well. It's going to be a great topic. And without further ado, let's break right into it. So there's a lot of different styles of keeping bees these days. And... A lot of things work for a lot of people and you know if you're maintaining bees doing what you're doing then hats off to you you know good stuff but what if i told you that a lot of those steps that we see today in today's teachings of beekeeping what if i told you that a lot of that stuff is just not needed like you could get rid of so many things and not only would you save yourself a lot of money as a beekeeper without having to buy a bunch of extra stuff but also you're going to have to work a lot less and you don't have to, you know, get into your bees so often and do all these extra steps and really just take up a lot of your schedule, you know, with just keeping bees. I mean, what if, what if you didn't have to do any of that stuff? I mean, it would, if you could save yourself so much time and so much money and you could see the success before your eyes, I think a lot of people would say, holy cow, like I don't need to do so much to my honeybees and they can be successful. We know that honeybees survive out in the wild and they've been there for thousands of years. They're gonna be there for a thousand more year, thousands more years. You know, the honeybees are doing fine in the wild. They don't need human interaction. Bees do not need human beings, they don't. So get that out of your mind that, you know, we have to interfere with bees for them to survive, we don't. They are gonna be just fine on their own and there's always gonna be a wild bee population. So if we can look and say, okay, well, if, a, if honeybees can live in a tree without any, you know, package installment, without any treatment, without any sugar water, without weekly visits, without all that stuff, if they can survive like that, then why can't we keep bees in a similar manner when we're, you know, maintaining bees in our apiary? Why can't we keep them in a very low maintenance style, you know, with all kinds of different steps. I mean, what what is the problem with us doing that? Now, a lot of people would tell you that the stuff that a lot of, the, all the stuff that beekeepers do out there is needed and that their bees can't live without it, but that's, that's false, okay? You don't need all that extra stuff and our apiary is a testament to that, okay? We've kept bees doing very little over the last five years. So like, what, what am I talking about, okay? Well, you're told that you need to go get packages every year and spend, you know, $200 or so on a package per package. Um, and you need to do that every year for so many colonies. But what if instead of doing that, you caught swarms and you put swarm traps in trees and you caught bees that are local bees, which are healthier, you know, what if you did that and saved yourself a bunch of money? Or let's talk, let's talk about another thing. People spend a lot of money on treatments, whether it's, you know, their mite straps or their auxilic acid or, you know, a, a bunch of other stuff, you know, they spend a lot of money on those things. So what if, you know, you just took that out of the equation and you just said, okay, I'm just not going to treat. Well, we're here once again to tell you that if you don't treat, your bees can survive and they've survived in our apiary for so long without any form of treatment and they've done really well. Or, you know, a lot of people say, I've got to feed my bees sugar water all the time. And I've got to get them sugar water. If I don't get them sugar water, they're certainly going to die. And I just don't know what to do. And so they will feed their bees sugar water all the time. 
and we haven't fed in years. Now we, we did start by feeding honey when we started in 2019, but for the last three years, we have not fed our bees anything whatsoever. And they've done fine. They've been just fine. They don't need that feeding. You know, there is plenty of nectar out there for them to survive. And again, we're taking out all these steps out of beekeeping. And at the end of the day, we're really reducing our workload. And I don't know about you, but I would much rather spend my time in a, cha in a chair with a nice cold beer washing my bees than I would dressing up in a suit, you know, going in, checking all the time and, and interfering with them. It, it's just a lot nicer to just observe them and not have to fret over so much work that is involved with all those extra steps. Another thing we see in beekeeping these days is, of course, how often beekeepers are going into their hives. So they go and a lot of advice out there and coming from big YouTubers and big literature out there, it's telling them, hey, you got to get in those bees once a week, once every two weeks. You got to check them out. You got to make sure you ain't got too many drones in there. You got to look for mites. You need to take a cup of bees and put them in a alcohol bath and kill those bees and see if there's any mites on those bees. You know, you got to be going to those colonies all the time. You need to look at your queen and check her out and, you know, all that other stuff. Like, what if you took that completely out of the equation? Like, what if instead of doing all that, you just did like one or two inspections a year and then you just let your bees do what they're going to do? And a lot of people look at this and they're like, no way. I'm, I'm getting in my bees business. I'm seeing what they're doing and I'm going to correct anything I see wrong with the hive. But, you know, a lot of times, if there are issues with your bees that are not something that you cause with your hive or anything like that, if there are interior issues, you know, that's something that's going to stick with them a lot of times because of their genetics. And what I mean by that is like a lot of their diseases and stuff, you know, if, if bees are going to be more susceptible to mites and stuff like that, that, that's just how they're going to be. And nothing's going to change that. And, you know... At the end of the day, you looking at your bees and you looking at your queen and oh my God, the queen is so beautiful. I love her. I love to look at the queen. I got to find the queen. Got to see where the queen is. You know, at the end of the day, like all you're doing is you're interfering with your beehives. And I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Honeybees do not want you in their hives. They don't want you coming in. They don't want you visiting. They don't want any of that because you're an intruder. And I don't care how much you talk to your bees and you tell them you love them and how you're best friends with your bees and all that stuff. No, that's none of that's true. Those honeybees don't want to have anything to do with you. And if they had it their way, you would never come and visit because they have an objective. They're getting food for the winter time and they're, they're staying very busy. They're taking care of their needs and all that stuff. And you coming in there and looking at all the frames and, you know, looking for your queen and, and holding your queen and all this stuff, all you're doing is interfering with them. And a lot of times, believe it or not, honeybees can abscond because of it. If you disturb them enough and you're in their business way too much, they could say, screw this, you know, we're out of here. And it, it is the truth. I mean, unfortunately, a lot of, you know, people talk about colony collapse disorder. And they say, well, you know, colony collapse disorder is such a problem. We have no idea what is causing bees to leave their hives. Meanwhile, we're putting thousands of them on a commercial truck and shipping them all across the country to do all kinds of different things. We have no idea why the bees are leaving and they're they're running away. Well, a lot of that stuff is that the reason those bees are leaving is because we're getting too much into those hives and we're disturbing those bees too much. You know, the way we keep bees here in our apiary is, you know, we I will basically go in, sometimes I'll do a spring inspection, sometimes I won't. And I'll basically just go in and in the spring I'll put my honey frames in and get them ready so they can start building honey and then I'll let the bees just sit there the whole season. And then I'll go in in the fall, I'll take the honey frames out, I'll put a divider board in, I'll fill the excess space with straw, close up the hive for the winter, done, and that's it. And the only time I'm really doing a full you know, check or anything like that is if the bee colony is no longer there and I need to clean out the colony because we, we kind of view our apiary kind of like as bee hotels and come when you want and 
leave whenever you want. And that's basically it. So, you know, we are not going to sit there and disturb our bees all the time, trying to keep them alive and whatnot, because at the end of the day, we know our bees just want to be left alone and they want to get on with their business. So what is necessary for beekeeping? Well, first I would ask you, what are you trying to do? If you're just trying to make an observation hive, then you could get a simple swarm trap, put it in a tree, bait it, bees will move in, they will you know, do their thing, they will help pollinate your plants and whatnot, and then they will leave, and then if you wanna clean it out, you can take it down and you could go through it. Um, our good friend over at 18 Bees, he keeps bees in logs. So I'd say it's a even more style of natural beekeeping than we have here, but he will keep his bees in logs and they will go in, they'll move into the log, they'll stay there for a while, for a year, two year, maybe more. And then when they leave, he will go in and get the honey out and then he'll set it up again and he'll get a new colony in there. If you're kind of doing, wanting to do a, a, the style we do where we keep lands hives, then it really is as simple as getting a lands hive you know, catching a swarm, putting the swarm in the land's hive, and then in the spring, you add honey frames, you let them sit throughout the season, and in the fall, you take the honey frames out, and you just give them about 10 gallons of space for the winter, so they can get through the winter okay. And it really is as simple as that. You don't really need to do much more than that. And some people might say, well, Wes, I mean, don't you split your hives if they get too big? Well, no, I don't. If, if the colony is getting too big and they're about to swarm, I don't split the colony. What I do is I wait for them to swarm. And then we have swarm hives all around our property. And then what we hope is, is when that colony leaves, that swarm leaves, they will find a new home in the area to move into. And it's just as simple as that. And through all these things that we do, we just save ourselves so much time. And it's just a lot easier on us. And, you know, I've enjoyed beekeeping this way. I've done the beekeeping that the traditional styles teach for five, I did it for five years and it was a lot of work. It got to the point where I, I really didn't look forward to messing with my bees because it was a lot of stuff to do. And the bees would die every single year. And it was the same thing every single year. The bees would die, you know, buy more packages, treat, you know, all that stuff. And it never worked versus what we do now where we never disturb our bees, we don't apply treatments, we catch swarms, we don't feed them, we just leave them alone. And we've kept bees no problem. It's been really easy. And you know, if we can do it, then you can too. And don't let anyone tell you that it's not possible because it's not true. Um, you, can, you can get out there and you can keep bees in a very you know, low maintenance style. And at the end of the day, you know, you're going to get to the point where you just like to pull out a chair, maybe drink you a cold beer and just watch those bees and just have a, a really nice day. And, you know, what's also really fun is when you're catching swarms, whenever you see a swarm move in to a hive, um, it's always a lot of fun when that happens. So, you know, at the, Basically, what I want you to get from this is don't overcomplicate bees. And I have a video, a video out there called Beekeeping is Not Complicated, so check that out too. But don't overcomplicate beekeeping. You know, keep it really simple, and you'd be surprised what you can get away with and just getting a lot of enjoyment out of just watching your bees. And it's a lot more fun that way. We've enjoyed it, and it's also saved us a lot of money. So, so we hope you enjoyed this video. Get those unnecessary steps out of beekeeping and it'll make your life a lot easier. You'll save a lot of money and you'll have a lot more fun doing it too. So until next time, we'll see you soon.